Well, my friends, I'm back. I'm back, and I am ready to share the first stitch out of our stitch book uh, that we're working from by Elizabeth Lovick. And this book is a beautiful stitch book, and it, the name of it, The Magic of the Shetland Lace Knitting. The Magic of Shetland Lace Knitting. <laughs> and, of course, you can find this book absolutely on Amazon and once I go through it I hope that you get it because it will it is a treasure to have well now I've already reviewed did the little stitch book review where I went over the two books and this is the one this is the stitch book so this is the one we're going to work out of so tonight I just decided to go ahead and break it up and maybe try to help uh, so the tutorial maybe not wouldn't be so long so tonight we're actually going to dive in and and uh, and just concentrate on the stitch and then work a small sample and of course I'll have a little surprise for you and then in the next video we will actually do a uh, a larger project a sweater but we'll get into that later all right so now first of all right off the bat again this is what the book looks like when you see it on Amazon this is the one stitches techniques and projects for light lighter than air shawls and more well we're making the more tonight <laughs> So now, remember I told you I had to work on how to use this book because, um, you know, it, it was just written. It wasn't written like a regular or a stitch book that I was used to. So the first stitch we're going to do is well known. A lot of knitters love it. It's one that it's just very simple to do, and I think you're going to like it. And the name of that stitch is called Cat's Paw. Cat's Paw. I don't know if I'm saying I'm saying it with a southern accent. <laughs> okay, now my heat's gonna kick on a little bit, so I'll just speak up. So now I'm gonna move my my little tag here because that's distracting for a minute. All right, so now let me tell you, we're gonna use two stitches. We're gonna do a we're gonna combine two stitches to make our our little design. So the first one is the cat's ball insertion. There's also a cat's paw where the, it's an all-over stitch. I don't have that one in front of me. But there is one where it's all over. Well, we're just going to use an insertion. We're going to insert this this stitch, come this stitch here, and it's only six rows. We're going to insert it in between another stitch. Remember the uh, the steaks I told you about before? When if you uh, looked at the um, book review. So like I said, this is just six stitches, and uh, and it's only six rows um, going up. So it's not it's not large, but it makes a beautiful, definite pattern. Now the first thing I I, I noticed when I started diving into uh, the Shetland uh, lace knitting uh, this book, first of all, like I said again, I am not a true Shetland or lace knitter because I do not knit with the very fine, the traditional lace that they would normally use. But, as she said in the book that I read to you, these stitches can be applied in, and used with any weight yarn or needles. So this is where we come in. We are going to adapt this stitch. I'm not going to be teaching Shetland lace per se. I'm just going to be sharing stitches from this book and I mean there's so many and wait till you see some of them oh my gosh I'm simply going to be sharing these stitches in a weight of yarn that I can use at my age now and hopefully that you can use and pick the size of yarn and needles that you can use and just see the difference in how it looks in different weights so now that is the first stitch uh, that I wanted to show you the cat's paw I wanted to show you how it looked in the book. Like I say, um, you'll be able to get it off Amazon. Now I'm going to show you the stitch we're going to match it with. As I said, one of the first things that I noticed there were there is such a the this Shetland lace. It is set up in a way. It is so. Um, it's laid out in such a perfect order and I, I assume that because 
people this is back in the back in times when they didn't have any computers and books and you know they probably hardly probably had a hard time getting paper <laughs> and then they probably had to they didn't have uh, stitches uh, you know patterns uh, written out or something they had to probably write by candlelight or kerosene light or by the fireplace <laughs> so I just assume they set it up as they were learning and passing it down in such a nice format that everything lines up and is so nice and easy for them to repeat so that they could because like I said they had to do it by memory they had to teach your kids and the kids are passing on and they, they just keep passing on so this is a lot of fun when you see how easy once we get into it you're gonna go okay this is not as bad as it looks when you look at the cover <laughs> I guess that's what scared me. No. Okay. But once you break it down, and that's what we're doing. The next stitch that we're going to combine with the cat's paw, and there are plenty we could have chosen, that I could have chosen. This is part of the steaks. This is the, like, separation. Something, the eyelets, the, something that makes it pop, makes the, the stitch, cat's paw, it's going to make it pop. This is called the ladder insertion. The ladder, L-A-D-D-E-R, ladder insertion. Now this is on, I guess I could have gave you the page 53. And it's only two rows. Just two rows. This two rows works up so pretty. Wait till you see it. Two rows, and it's the same thing on each row. Row one, the right side. Knit two, yarn over, slip, slip, knit. Row two, the wrong side. Knit two, yarn over, slip, slip, knit. <laughs> no, there's no echo in here. I'm reading it from the book. <laughs> then you're back at row one again. Row one, knit two, yarn over, slip, slip, knit. And But it makes, when you see it, it makes a beautiful combination, especially with this cat's paw pattern, We're going this lace that we're going to add it to. So now I want you to see how are we going to just pick and choose and pick and choose as we go through this stitch book? Project by project. I'm going to go as fast as I can so you got to keep up. Look, I'm 73. You got to keep up, people. <laughs> All right, so now let's go back to, let's go back to the cat's paw. Now don't start looking at something else. Now, I'm, look, keep our eyes right here. Look, one stitch and one pattern at a time. All right, so now let me show you what it looks like as it's as I worked it up in some scrap yarn this is just some practice yarn um, hold on let me just get the first one out let's take let's do the scarf first okay I have a scarf I thought well I will do it so that you could have a project for those who are more um, still new at knitting or returning to knitting or, you know, you have enough that you understand the, the process of knitting, but you, you know, you're ready to, to step out of the box. You're, you're just tired of knitting back and forth, knitting back and forth, guard us it. <laughs> and you want, well, this is it. This is for you. So this is not only a, a stitch tutorial, but we're gonna, you're going to have a nice project at the end. All right, so now there's a book. I'm going to lay it aside for a minute. Now let's talk a little bit. Let me go through and show you what the stitch looks like. Now I have to check my camera to see since I had it. See if I'm... I think so. I think you can see that. Okay. Alright, so, and then I'll hold it up too. I did a nice vivid green. This is practice. This is just scrap yarn, people. We're just practicing. I'm going to leave my key over here out of the way. All right, as I hold this up, can you see? This is the cat's paw stitch here right in the center. And here's the steak on either side. But what I did different, I added the steak twice. I thought, well, I wonder. It was pretty. The first one, first little sample I did, you know, for my, you know, when I was working it up, I thought, oh, that's pretty. And then I thought, well, what if I, what if I added it twice? Wonder what it would look like. It looks amazing. 
<laughs> it looks like I really put a lot of work. Look, it looks like I really put a lot of work, and all I did was just do it twice. <laughs> Does that make sense? This is that little scarf I, I shared with you before. I forgot what video. Remember, it was the one with the hearts where I said, well, sometimes if I need a scarf, a little quick scarf, maybe... I'm not, you know, I'm not one I hate to have to go and make a scarf so long, you know. So, a lot of times I just do it this, I cheat a little bit, and I do some lace or texture or whatever, cables or whatever, and then I leave maybe a couple of inches of just plain stocking it, knit on the front, pearl on the back. Then I go into one of the ribbing stitches, or you can go into another for guiding stitch. It's just... Whatever is decorative or whatever you think will fit in this portion. This is the portion that goes that will go real, real long, wrap around your neck, and then it, and then the short end comes up under this, and then it comes, and then this part is what hangs down in front. I can't put it on because I, I don't have enough done. Does that make sense? But can you see the stitch? All right, so... I'll come back to that a, a little later and make sure you got all this down because I'm going to give you the formula for this scarf. I, I got, look, Jay got you. <laughs> now, I thought, well, some people, like me, maybe sometimes just don't want to work on a scarf. I want to work on something else, so I thought, well, why don't, because I know a lot of you, just like me, you started out with Atkins. I'm going to pull in so I can see. With afghans. So I thought I'd make a little small, little practice afghan. Of course, you can make yours as large. Once I give you the formula, you can increase this as large as you want. You can use any size weight of yarn. You can use the need, the appropriate needle for that yarn. So this is what, this is what she said in the book, and this is what we're going to practice. We're going to use different weights of yarn. So now I'm just going to pass this before the camera so that you can look at it. There's the cat's paw lace center right there. Then I have two steaks. The same steak, the ladder steak, one here and one here. So there are two that are butted up against each other. Then the cat's paw. And just look, you can make, like I say, you can just keep doing the repeats as much as you like. And I'm going to give you the formula for this. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that a pretty stitch? Looks like you've done a lot of work. But it's so simple. You, I, I had to do the two to keep you from falling asleep on it. <laughs> Alright, so now let me get my sample that we're going to actually work. And then I'll break it down. I'll, I'll uh, go over you, uh, the, my information sheet so that you'll know what you're looking at and what the numbers mean. So I'll be right back. All right, so I want to come back and go ahead and start out by sharing, just walking you through some points of my information sheet. Now, I don't expect you to try to read it off here, because, but I will have it on. the. It'll be printed, you know, like I normally do. But I just want to share... Uh, a little information so that you'll know what you are looking at when you see the information sheet. First of all, like I say, you can work any yarns uh, with the appropriate needle. Uh, I'm going to be using, you know, my regular number four weight, and I'm using a number nine, you know, so pretty standard for me. All right, this uh, cat's paw pattern or lace stitch uh, that's in the, uh, Elizabeth's book is a multiple of seven stitches. It's just seven stitches, okay? Now, down here, I give you my lace scarf, and I write out my one-line formula. For those that are new, or you know you, you know that I work from a, a formula line, and that line simply represents the number of stitches that I cast on the needle. On this, for the scarf, you'll cast on 29 stitches. Whatever needle size you're gonna use. Now, if you're using real small yarn, you can you you know you can add more refigure this but this is just for the standard weight right now this is us working together so try to use number four or something like that you will cast on 29 stitches and knit two rows now I'm gonna go back and break it down for you what's on how I just slice and dice the cast on line or cast on uh, number of stitches into what I need 
the B right here, it starts out with B4. The B simply represents border. So a border of four. Well, the four represents the stick. Remember, there are four stitches. I don't know if I said it or not, but uh, on, the, on the ladder insertion, there are four stitches. I may not have said it, but I meant to. All right, it's so only two rows, but there are four stitches. So B represents a border of four. Then, in parentheses, you're going to see 4 plus 13 plus 4. All right, in the, in the stitch book, right here, the lace pattern, you may not can see all the instructions, but at least you can see the stitch. Okay, this uh, cat's paw pattern is 7 stitches. See it right there. She tells us that right there. Uh, also, the number of stitches are up here, and you'll see a, a 7.6. Well, the 7 represents how many stitches across the stitch. How many stitches it actually take to go across? One repeat. Then the, the 6 represents a vertical, how many rows up. So it's 7 stitches across, but 6 rows up. I had to get used to that, too. <laughs> All right, but as you notice, there's no connecting stitches. It's just the stitch itself. So I have, I have, I went ahead and created connecting stitches that if you will follow me on this, it's going to make a world of difference to you every time you want to use a stitch because I've already figured out a good number and it works out really well. So let me just show you. Okay, so... Uh, that four represents the second ladder insertion. Four. Then the plus 13, seven stitches, and then I'm giving you, and you'll see it when we actually do the stitch, I'm giving you three stitches on either side of seven. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Every time I want to work this cat's paw pattern here or wherever else, and there need to be some connecting or some separating stitches. I've already given you a number that will work perfect. I am telling you, it's going to work absolutely just perfect. So I'll have a stick here, then the 13, that's three stitches on each side of the cat's paw stitch of her seven, then another stick, another ladder, then plus the last border, a border of four. And if you add all of those up that I've I've broken it down for you, added my little touch. You get 29 stitches to cast on. And then, of course, knit two rows so that we can get started. Now, I won't do the afghan right now because you need to see it. So let's get started first on uh, actually knitting and knitting row by row. All right, be back in just a minute. Let's see if there's anything else that I missed telling you on that. No, I think that's going to be good. I just wanted to break it down for you so when you saw the information sheet, you know what you're looking at and you know, well, Jay, that's seven. How come you got 13? Because I went ahead and figured out a nice connecting number for you. But let me show you how it looks when you work it. Back in just a minute. All right, and you will also need a couple of uh, different color stitch markers. So I have some purple ones and some white ones. And I keep mine small when I'm working on something like this where I've got a lot of stuff going on. All right, I have knit my two rows. All right, so now we're ready to put in markers and work our first uh, ladder stick. I'll show you how easy it is to remember and how it flows. All right. This tail is a little long, so I can cut some of that off, maybe. Sometimes if your tail's too long, it just gets in the way. So I'm going to cut some of that off. Now, make sure you got the working yarn. All right, on the pattern, okay, on the, uh, on the formula line, it says a border of four. So I'm going to work the first ladder stick right off the bat. So it's knit two, one two now yarn over and then slip slip reach back and knit like that 
just like that. Slip, slip, knit. Okay. Now I want you to, let's see if I, which way did I do it? Yep. All right, now I want you to put one marker. I'm going to grab up maybe a white marker, and I'm going to stick it right there. That's to remind me that this is the border uh, steep. Now I'm going to add another steep, the same one. Watch, and I'm going to show you something a little different. Okay, it starts the same. Everyone, everywhere. <laughs> you knit two. One, two. Then yarn over. Okay, then you do the slip slip knit. But you can also do the slip slip knit by just simply, in order to save a step, and I like to keep going in the same direction. If you notice the slip slip stitch that you do this way, you got to slip slip and then you got to turn your needle. Well, if you just go into the back of the next two stitches, just like knitting two stitches together through the back loop, yarn over, put the needle behind those two and knit them and it's the same thing and I save myself a step. So now I have the first border, two, one, two, three, four, I put a marker. The second stick, one, two, three, four, they're the, exactly the same. Knit two, yarn over, slip, slip, knit. Now I'm going to pick up a nice color marker and put next. This tells me where the cat's paw, the 13 stitches, that I need when we get to the cat's paw. But we're not going to start it right away. It's too close to the bottom edge, so we need to knit a few rows to give some separation. Does that make sense? But I need to go ahead and put my markers in. So that is a total of 13 stitches. So let's just count it off. I have a marker, so I count one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, let's see, eight, nine. Okay, always count twice. Okay, and this is what's going to help you. You're going to have 13, should have 13 stitches. Two, four, I don't know if that's a split yarn. I think that's a split yarn. I'll have to go back and check that. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen stitches. You can always check your count. I put a marker. We're not ready to work the cat's paw yet. We just set in the marker. So I know that's where it belongs right there. Now it brings me over. I should have eight stitches left on this side. Two, four, six, eight. And then we're going to go back to the ladder stick. It's knit two, one, two, yarn over. And then if you want to try the slip slip knit this way, just stick your needle in through the back loop of those two next two stitches. Knit those stitches. Put a marker. Try to match your markers on each side. That way you know exactly. Oops, I should have a white one then. There we go. See, I'm matching the marker so everything lines up. Then I'm ready for the last stick, which is the border. Knit two. Yarn over. Slip, slip, knit. And I'm going in that direction because it just keeps me flowing and I don't have to do that extra step. Take your time. Bring it through. And there's the first row. All right, when you turn the work, all right, when you turn the work, all right, I'll tell you this too, even before I turn the work. When you get the book, you're going to look in the book and you go, Jay, she said knit. Or you're going to notice that a lot of the patterns with a lot of the Shetland lace is worked on a background of garter stitch. That means you just knit every row and you're putting all this pretty lace. Well, I, I'm going to, we may do some of that, but as much as possible and when I can, just like I've changed my uh, stitch, I'm going to try to work it against the background of stockinette. 
where I knit on the front and purl on the back. To me, I can see the stitch better and it pops. But I guess the tradition is to work in garter stitch. So it's just, you know, up to you. But in the book, you will notice that it will say on row two, knit. But on my instructions and on my sheet, it says purl. <laughs> so I wanted you to see that right up. I want to tell you that too. Otherwise, you're like, uh-oh, something's wrong. No. All right, so now when I turn, everyone, everywhere, every time, no matter what side, let's go again. I have two steaks here. I knit two. I do a yarn over. I'm going to do the slip, slip, knit in that direction. Or you can do it the traditional way. And I pull it off the needle. I slide the marker. I do the same thing. I knit two, one, two, yarn over, and then I slip, slip, knit. See, my needle is continuing to go in the right direction, and it saves me a step to do it like this. All right, so now I'm on the wrong side of the work, and you can pretty much tell, and of course you can mark it if you feel like you need it. So I know I need to bring my yarn in front. I'm not ready to work the cat's paw yet, but I need to purl. Where she says knit, I am purling across the cat's paw lace section. Just purling my stitches just like this. You know, some people, I don't know why some people don't like purling. I think it's the easiest flow. It flows, to me, it just flows with your body. <laughs> Knitting, you got to, got to twist your wrists and your hands and your, I don't know. It just flows for me. I don't have a problem with it. All right, I had a stitch here. I was going to check to see if I... Remember, I had a, a crazy stitch there. Let me turn it to the right side and just... It, it split, so let me just fix it. All I have to do is just put that in there. Sometimes... Like I said, this is just practice yarn, people. I was not going to... I, I didn't want to get a really nice skein of yarn just for this practice. Ooh, I got a mess here with this. It split really bad. Okay. So I'll continue across. I'll just purl and then I'll check my stitch count. Remember, should have 13 just to be on the safe side. So I am just, this is row two. If you've forgotten where you were, this is row two. I'm on the wrong side. Now let's hope I got 13. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. Good. All right, now I simply slide the mark, but even before I slide the marker, I know I have to start the steep with two, knit two. So put your yarn in back, just like that, then slide the marker, and then you won't have any problems or wind up with an extra stitch. So knit two, one, two, yarn over, and then slip, slip, knit. And I'm going in through the back loop. All right. Then slide the next marker, or the last one, right before. This is the border. Knit two. One. Two. Yarn over. And then slip, slip, knit. Okay. So you don't see much yet. But you can at least your stitches are in and you see the lace start to form on each end. We're going to knit a few more rows in here because I don't want the, the cat's paw to touch any of this. You won't be, it won't stand out as much. So, let me, um, let me get set up, change my camera, and then I will be right back for row three. All right, so when I was counting, it seemed like I was counting the lace. We hadn't really started the lace, but we're about to. So now off camera, I went ahead and I knitted, uh, knitted across and purled back. Now right here in the center, well, first of all, let's take a look at our lace. Can you see the lace? See if I'm in a good position on the camera. I think so. I don't want to get too close because Whew. Gives people vertigo when you're too close. Okay, but you can see the lace here. I'll just bring it to the camera. You see the lace starting to form. Now, I did a couple of, like I said, some extra rows. 
I did. I have four rows. If you just stop and count, you may not can see mine, but you should have. You'll have a, a at least four rows. One, two, three, and here's the fourth row, row number four. And you see there's some space there so that we can start the cat's paw so it's not sitting right down here on the border. Alright, so here we're getting ready to start row one of the actual lace. But first, just to remind you, I want to just keep doing it so you'll remember. Alright, the first ladder stick is knit two, yarn over, and slip slip knit. Slide that marker, that represents the border one. Here's the second one. Knit two. Yarn over and slip slip knit. Now we're up to the actual uh, cat's paw pattern. This is row one, and I have some separation. I have room to start it. All right, let me read it to you. Row one, the right side reads knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over. Then you do a slip slip knit, knit one. And if you counted those, you would have seven stitches. Well, we have 13. So this is what you have to remember to do because I'm adding three stitches on this side of the seven and three stitches over here because it will, I'm telling you, it's, gonna, it's just going to help you. <laughs> You're going to get used to it. And it's going to make a world of difference. So the first thing I do is knit three stitches automatically. One, two, and three. Those are extra stitches to fill this section in. And so that I have, uh, so that my pattern is, is, is centered. That's what I want to say. Yeah, centered. <laughs> so now the next seven stitches, this is what I want. I'm going to read this. Uh, it's going to be on the screen. It says knit one. Knit two stitches together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip slip knit, either way you want to do it, and then knit one. And at first, for a few times, you're going to go, oh, Jay, I've got some stitches left. It's the three stitches that I added to make this uh, motif uh, just fit better, flow better, and you don't have to come up with connecting stitches. It's already on here. So I just knit off the last three that I added. I knit the first three and I knit off the last three. There you go. It will stay the same number, 13 stitches. Slide the marker and we're back to the steep. Knit two. Yarn over. Slip, slip, knit. Slide the next marker. Knit two. Yarn over and slip slip knit. So now you can see, if you look real close, you can see the lace work starting to of row one. Now when I turn the work, now you can see that we are on the wrong side. But on every row, every one, everywhere, <laughs> don't take your eye off the ball. It's knit two, one, two, yarn over, slip, slip, knit. Even though we're on the wrong side, slide the marker, knit two, one, oops, two, Yarn over and then slip slip knit. Now, for me, I'm doing working on a background of stockinette. Knit on the front. Now I bring the yarn to the front so I can purl on the back. When you're purling, the yarn is in front of the needle. And so you just purl across the cat's paw lace stitches just like this. Yeah, some of you who are more, you know, more see, if, you know, get your season like me, and if you think you want to do the garter ridge, 
but I'm telling you, it was it fights my eyes just to see the stitch, see the pattern. They it just doesn't pop out; it just blends in. So as where I can and when I can, I'm gonna try uh, stocking it. All right, now I see the last marker, but I know I have to start with what two knit stitches. So stop. If you don't remember to put the yarn in back you're gonna wind it with an extra stitch and you're gonna like Jay what am I doing what am I doing <laughs> you're not putting the yarn in the back <laughs> slide the marker now I'm ready to go knit two one two yarn over slip slip knit all right slide the last marker knit two one Two, yarn over, and slip, slip, knit. Now, look, can you see it? Can you see it kind of coming through now? Okay, so that was row one and two of the actual pattern. Well, I will give you a chance to catch up. When I come back, we will be ready to start row three. See, it's only... It's not many rows, only six rows, people. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. So I will be back and we will do row three. Give you a minute to kind of work some stitches. Take care. We are ready to, well, let's let's do our, our uh, borders and our steeks first. I could have had that done. I was busy looking at something else. But it's good to, a good reminder. Knit two, yarn over, slip, slip, knit. You're going to be saying that in your sleep tonight. <laughs> okay, slide the marker. Knit two. One, oops, and two. Yarn over, and then do a slip, slip, knit. I slide my marker. All right, we are up to row three of our uh, cat's paw. Uh, lace stitch. Row three reads, knit two stitches together, yarn over, knit three, yarn over, and then slip, slip, knit. Now how easy is that? But before we can do any of that, what do you have to remember? I've already put in extra stitches to balance or to center, put my, uh, my lace so it'll be in the center so I have to start with a knit three one two three that's not on the pattern it's just part of you memorizing <laughs> all right now watch this it says knit two stitches together now we're doing the pattern it's on the screen knit two stitches together yarn over now I want you to notice these three stitches so if you get lost on and you can't remember which row you just look for a landmark, and this is a good landmark. These three stitches, no matter what pattern you work, they always fall like this when it says knit three. There you go. So you can see those three stitches spread out right there. So after I yarn over, there's a yarn over. Now I knit three. One, two, three. Okay. Then I yarn over. I do another yarn over. Just come over the needle. Just like that. Then I do the slip slip knit. Ooh, I'm just, my hand is sweating or something. I do the slip slip knit. And guess what I had have at the end? Those three extra stitches so that I can keep this uh, cat's paw lace in the center. So one, two, and three. How easy is that? It's already in there for you. Slide the marker. And now we're back to knit two, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, slide the next marker, knit two, yarn over, and slip, slip, knit. Just like that. Look at that. All right, of course, row four, you turn the work, you're on row four, you do your um, your borders and everything, your, your steaks, and then I purl my stitches, 
and finish on this end with the six and I will see you back at on the next right side which is row five so just take your time now, now be careful and don't lose any yarn overs now because we're working the pattern all right I'll see you back at row five I'm back got a little work off camera of course I hope you're enjoying this I hope things are falling into place like I said, it just seems hard, but once you kind of get a rhythm for it, it really, because of the way, that, you know, they set the stitches up, it just really flows and falls right into place. We're on the right side, of course, now. I'm back. This is row five of the cat paw lace stitch. It reads, knit two, yarn over, knit three together, through the back loop, yarn over, and knit two. Alright, so I slide, I've done my two sticks, I slide the marker before I can get to the beginning of the row, I have to do what? Knit three stitches. One, two, three. Those are the stitches I added. Now we can start the actual knit two. One, two. Now yarn over, knit three stitches together through the back loop. So I'm going to kind of pull down on the next three stitches so I can get them all at the same time. My needle is in the back. I put the yarn and I knit. Take your time to get all three. I knit those three stitches through the back loop. Okay, now I do a yarn over and knit the next two stitches. One, two. And you should have three stitches left that I added. One, two, three. One. So you knit those three. Get some yarn here, slide the marker, and you do knit two, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, slide the next marker, take your time now, make sure you don't lose anything, knit two, yarn over, pull down a little bit, and slip, slip, knit. Okay. Look, looky, looky, loo. <laughs> All right, so now we have everything centered. We have our two steaks. You can see them on each side. We have just worked row five. Of course, row six is the wrong side. So we do the purl. All right, now all you have to do is to continue to work rows one through six with the steaks on each side to the length you want. Now let's go real quick and to back to the scarf and then I'll switch and go to our uh, little afghan sample. So as you can see different weights of yarn looks and feels different. Now this is Karen Simply Soft. This is just some old I don't know what uh, maybe some impeccable or something like this. Just practice yarn people. I'm just practicing. <laughs> so it's a lot stiffer. But it works on any weight of yarn. Now here it is in a lighter weight. Now if I was using baby yarn or, or number three yarn. It would be even more drapier and lighter. And just see. Alright so right here you can see. We've done everything that I did on the sample, I did here. I did the two rows, I knit a, uh, about four rows so I'd have some room before I started the actual cat paw pattern, but you can see the two steaks I started right away on this side, the latter uh, steaks, and then on this side, and if you notice it leaves this pretty little, I don't know, a little, pretty little edge there. And then I work. let's see how many did I work? This is up to you. If you were doing this scar, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you work, repeat the pattern as many times as you want. When you decided to stop, when you decide to stop, continue to work the first 
the border on this side and the border on this side. But the second stick, you don't have to work it. You will simply knit, do the four, and then knit all the way across because you 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 decide you're going to stop now. However many you repeat, all the way till you get to the last four stitches. Then you go back into knit two, yarn over, slip, slip, knit. Turn the work. You when you turn the work, you you got to keep the two borders in pattern. Knit two, yarn over, slip, slip, knit. Then you'd purl back. And then you get over here and you do the same thing. Knit two, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, turn the work, and you continue to work for at least maybe a couple of inches, you know, just to give some separation so that this lace doesn't run into whatever you're going to put here. Now, since I've already given you uh, this uh, scarf has an odd number, the easiest thing for me to do was to just go right into one by one ribbing. Remember, when I'm knitting flat, I need an odd number. Does that make sense? So instead of coming up with an, uh, some kind of other stitch, I worked my stockinette for a couple of inches, maybe, you know, a couple and a half, whatever, and then I did the outside, knit two, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, and then I started with Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. And you just follow like you normally do a ribbing at the bottom. Does that make sense? And, of course, to do this scarf, this section has to be really, really long. So that it can wrap around your neck and then you can kind of flip your sweat, uh, flip this little part in front. It's the same as a, a Valentine scarf, the sweetheart scarf. It's pink, has the hearts on it. Does that make sense? Okay, we're almost there. Let me get this out of the way and let me go over the uh, the small Afghan uh, working formula. Just so that you can see we've done the same thing, but now it's, we're going to stretch it out a little more. All right, back in just a minute. Alright, so just for fun, I just thought it would be fun for those who, uh, you know, maybe just didn't want to do a scarf and maybe wanted to do something, but just want to do the stitch. So you may as well make it into something. So here is, uh, I guess it could be a, like a long rectangle shawl if you use real thin yarn, you know, uh, yarn with a lot of drape. It could be that, or it could be if you use heavier yarn, you know, more of a heavier number four, and larger needles. You know, now this is one that uh, if you like large needles like number 11, uh, you know, or something like that, uh, this is a 10 and a half. 10 and a half used to be one of my favorite needle sizes. But, you know, just to create something different or a different look to the same stitch. So here we go. Let me make sure if I'm on, if I'm on the right side. Yep, that's the right side. That's the side I need to be on. All right, I'm just going to walk you through. I don't have really anything to do because we've covered everything. But on the sheet, on my information sheet, the small afghan, it reads, a border of four. So there's the first four right there. Then you see, well, it says border, four, four dash four. So there's the first four, and then there's a the second four. Then there's 13. Remember, I've already given you the three connecting stitches. So you don't have to think about that now. Like, oh, now i got to separate. Uh, let's see, wonder what works. I've already worked it out. So it's 13. So 3, then the uh, stitch, the uh, cat's paw stitch, and then you end with 3. Okay? Then you look on the, on the working formula. It says 4-4 four, four again. All right, that means the first 4 and then the second stitch. All right, go around, then here's 13. That includes the three stitches I did, the seven stitches of the pattern of the lace, and then the three extra stitches at the end. Then it says four, four. Four stitches for the uh, ladder, and four stitches for this one, and 13. And of course, you end with a border of four, four. Now, how easy is that? I simply started the same. I knit two rows, and then I made sure I knit a few extra rows before I, I worked the steaks after I finished two rows, but then I knitted an extra four rows 
before I started the cat's paw pattern. See, so just to give it some clearance. And this can go up as long as you want it. Maybe you can think of something that I hadn't thought of that you might could use it for. But it just looks pretty, and like I said, it just depends. This is just some of the Hobby Lobby yarn, just some yarn I grabbed up, people. I wasn't trying to do anything. I wanted to. It's about the stitch. This is a stitch tutorial. <laughs> so what do you think of that? And Oh, let's just turn around and look at the back. I guess we could look at the back just to see how it pops out, even, you know. You can see the steaks, and you can see the lace this is the back side now for me I'm doing I'm trying to work it on um, I'm working it on um, stocking it stitch knit on the front pearl on the back but in the book if you get, when you get the book and I hope you order it from Amazon because we're gonna be doing a lot of stitches out of it and you're gonna look you're gonna want to be in the know <laughs> look I thank you and I'm sure Elizabeth Lovick thanks you too <laughs> for buying the book you can get it on Amazon all right, so now that's that's that. Now I want to let me clear this up, and then I have uh, a little sneak or preview or a little teaser because the next video after this one, okay, next week, for those that want to do a sweater, I'm going to go right into a sweater. But I knew everyone, you know, just don't have the time or the, you know, the mind or just want to have to do a sweater. So that's why I came up with these little secondary projects, you know, a scarf, not just a stitch. So maybe I'll start doing that more, you know, when I do stitch tutorial. Don't, you know, the stitch is fine, but, you know, we were getting these little swatches and somebody said, what can we do with them? <laughs> well, so I said, well, why don't I make something? At least start it. So this will, I think I'm going to continue this because, like I said, this is just an inexpensive yarn. I'm practicing. I am learning. So I have about three skeins of this, maybe four. I know I have at least three. So I'll just, this will be something I could just put in a bag. And when I feel like working on something, when I'm not working on a project for um, one of my tutorials, this will be fun because it's not hard. And there's only six rows for the, the main lace. And then the other two, the steep, is the same. <laughs> so why not? All right, let me give you, uh, put this up, and then I'm going to give my season knitters, uh, the ones who are ready to do another sweater, and uh, I'll be back with a little teaser for you. All right, so I just want to give you a little teaser. I'm not going to show you much. I just wanted just a little tease to let those that are, uh, waiting on the next sweater. Of course, we're using the cat's paw. And uh, so now you can practice it, work it. And uh, now you'll have a stitch down. And we're going to do a sweater. We're going to uh, do one of my favorite style sweaters. But I want to get into that tonight. This is just a little teaser just so that you can see. And I will tell you, I will be working my sweater in a number nine. As I always do. You will need... Uh, at least a 36 inch in length or a 48 uh, inches in length. So I'll uh, type up and, and kind of give a kind of a size chart help to kind of help you. This is going to be a nice little, um, it's, it's it's not going to be like uh, what they call oversized, but it's going to be a nice loose fitting little sweater jacket or whatever. So I think you'll like it. And it's like I said, we're in summer, so we've we've already started to get hot. So I didn't want to do anything with a lot of sleeves or, or things like that. But uh, you know, if you're in a where it's cooler, cooler, uh, this will make a pretty like a Lands End vest, something like that. Or you can put sleeves in yours if you want. But this is just a little teaser. I just wanted you to see that I'm working the same stitch and. The yarn, I have at least four skeins. I'm using Karen Simply Soft. And look at this color because when you see the calendar for, what, what month am I working for? Oh, for May. <laughs> for May, when you see my calendar, this is gold. I got this at Joann's and I just went ahead and bought four skeins because I just buy it that way. So this is the color gold. And it is, wait till you see it when I, when it, when I put it up against the calendar, it is so pretty. So, I've given you information. Here's the key. 
to unlock the door so that we can uh, use these uh, stitches as we work through the book. Again, here's the book. It's the key you need to work it. So, I hope you join me. And until then, I will, uh, as you can see, I've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> that's why I'm only giving you a teaser, because that's, that's as far as I can. <laughs> that's as much as I have. <laughs> so, until next time, enjoy the cat's paw pattern. Work it up on some practice yarn if you want to. And then, uh, of course, if you finish anything, any anytime you work any of my projects, I would love to see your pictures or your version of it, whatever. And I always leave a, an address at the end of my videos to send me, send me, and make them pretty pictures. You know, lay them, do them pretty. Don't just lay them on, hang them up and put some pretty. And I had to start giving a prize to people who put flowers on them. <laughs> you know I, you know I love a flower. <laughs> so make them pretty. And send me at least two or three pictures, the front, the back, you know, sides. Put your little knickknacks out. Look, I got birds sitting over here. Got my flower. All right. This is Jay. So I hope you've enjoyed this stitch tutorial number 12. This is the cat's paw pattern from the book of the Shetland Lace Knitting by Elizabeth Lovick. All right. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.